In this video, we continue with examples from chapter 3.4, and we take a look at the sine volume for a tetrahedron and for a parallel pipid. So our first image here is a tetrahedron. This is a type of pyramid with triangles on all four faces. And our second image here is what's known as a parallel pipid. So it is the three-dimensional version of a parallelogram where each of the six faces is a parallelogram. You can think about it like if we took a box and kind of tilted it on its uh, one of its corners. So if you could push over one of the corners of the box, you would get this parallel pipid shape. And you can imagine a parallel pipid could be chopped up and reconstructed to be a symmetric box. So the formula for the volume of the parallel pipid is just an extension in three dimensions of the formula for the area of a parallelogram. So if you see here, the determinant of x1, y1, x2, y2, we knew was the area of the parallelogram. So now we just extend it into three dimensions for the volume of the parallel pipid. Here's a quick look at the tetrahedron on the left as it compares to the pyramid. If you think about the pyramids at Giza, those have a rectangular bottom and then four triangles for the upper faces. So a tetrahedron is a little different. It's got just four triangular faces. We also have triangular prisms where you've got rectangles on uh, three sides and then triangles on the top and bottom. And a hexahedron is what we think of as the classic box here. So we are going to take a look at the volume of the tetrahedron. So let's find the volume of the tetrahedron, also known as a pyramid with the four triangular faces, with vertices at x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, x3, y3, z3, and x4, y4, z4. So we're going to think about what if one of those vertices is 0, 0, 0 at the origin. So then we have vertices uh, x1 through z1, x2 through z2, x3 through z3, and then the 0, 0, 0. And we can think about that as 1 6 times the volume of the parallel pipid. So if you think back to trying to squish a tetrahedron in here, you could chop this up into six pieces, the parallel pipe it down here, and get one uh, tetrahedron from each piece. So we are going to show how this expands out. So for the triangle above here, we have x1, y1 uh, with a 1 in the last column. Uh, to find the determinant here for the area. Uh, x2, y2 with a 1 in the last column and x3, y3 with a 1 in the last column. And then uh, 1 half out front because it's a triangle. So we know it's half the area of a rectangle. So we had uh, three sides and the three areas of the three triangles to add and subtract. So now we're in a dimension with four faces and the volumes of four tetrahedrons to add and subtract. So the signed volume of the tetrahedron with vertices at uh, 0, 0 through x3, y3, z3 is in front of the triangle x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, x3, y3, z3. So think about how we would uh, interpret that. We'd have 1 6 times the determinants for each of these four faces. So you can see in the first determinant, the row for x2, y2, z2 is swapped out with x4, y4, z4. So we're going to go through all the different uh, combinations here. In the second determinant, the top row is swapped out for x4, y4, z4. And then uh, the second row here, this should be a z1 here. Uh, is x1, y1, z1, and the third row of the determinant is x2, y2, z2. So these uh, rows shift around because of the perspective we're looking from. So then in the third determinant, we've got x2, y2, z2 through x4, y4, z4. 
And then in the last determinant, we've got x3, y3, z3, x2, y2, z2, and x1, y1, z1 uh, in this opposite order because of perspective that we're calculating from. So think about if you did some row swaps here, that would change the signs. So if you pull these all together and do some row swaps to change the signs, you can get here the volume of the tetrahedron is negative one six times this determinant x1 y1 z1 x2 y2 z2 x3 y3 z3 x4 y4 z4 with ones in the far columns so that's kind of conceptually how we think about this if you go back to where we were finding the area of the triangle You can see this is sort of like a three-dimensional extension of the area of the triangle in the same way that the parallel pipid volume is a three-dimensional extension of the area of the parallelogram. So that's a helpful way to think about it. Okay, so let's do an example. So we want to find the volume of the tetrahedron with the vertices at 3, negative 1, 1. 4, negative 4, 4, 1, 1, 1, and 0, 0, 0. So I went ahead and put them into the determinant just following our formula here that I've circled in red, the sine volume of the tetrahedron. And so we put a plus or minus out front because we want to think about volume in terms of absolute value. So we'll switch signs if we need to. And then notice the ones are here in the last column because this is a three-dimensional calculation. So we've got the ones here to help us uh, calculate that because this is a four by four matrix. Okay, so we fill in our points in the determinant, which I've done already over here in the second determinant. So each uh, point corresponds with a row and then the fourth spot in those rows are all ones. So I'm gonna head into SIPI and calculate the volume of this tetrahedron. For a four by four determinant, I don't wanna do that by hand. So let's see, I'll call this V equals matrix. And then I'll enter my matrix values. If it was a two by two determinant, I could do it by hand faster than I could type it in SIMPY. But a four by four determinant would be a lot of cofactor expansions. I'd have to go down to three dimensions and then down to two dimensions with row swaps and row rearranging. So for me, it's much faster to use uh, Simbi or any other matrix calculator tool you want. Okay, so we'll check to make sure V matches our matrix here. Looks like a match. And then I want the determinant of V, so I'll say DETV in parentheses we get a negative 16. So our volume calculation here is going to be plus or minus 1, 6 times negative 16. So I'm going to make everything positive, and this will be 16 over 6 or 8 over 3 if I reduce it down for my volume of the tetrahedron. And we don't know the units. If it was inches, we'd say cubic inches. If it was centimeters, we'd say cubic centimeters. Uh, so without the units, we'll just say our volume as a value. Okay, so we know if the points are in the same plane, the tetrahedron is going to have zero volume. So our formula to check if points are in the same plane or not is to put them into the tetrahedron volume formula and see if we get a zero or not. So uh, we want to determine here in the example if these points 3, negative 2, negative 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2, 3, negative 1, negative 2, and 3, 2, 1 are coplanar. So I've just substituted the points into our tetrahedron volume formula, and I'm going to go check in SIMPY to see what my results are. If I get a zero here, that means the tetrahedron has zero volume, and these points are all in the same plane. If I get any non-zero value, that tells me that the points are not coplanar, they're not in the same plane. Okay, I'll call this matrix M. And then type in my values. 
negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 1 on that top row, 2, negative 1, negative 2, 1 on that second row, negative 3, negative 1, negative 2, 1 on the third row. And again, even though I have to take the time to type this in Simpy, it's still much, much faster than if I was trying to calculate this with cofactor expansions by hand. So our last row here is 3, 2, 1, 1. And we can verify M to make sure I've typed it correctly. Looks good. And so we'll do the determinant of matrix M. And I get negative 30. So since that's not zero, that tells me these points are not all in the same plane. So since the determinant is non-zero, the points are not in the same plane or the points do not lie in the same plane. If we want to find the equation of a plane through distinct points, and we're given these three points in three dimensions, uh, then we can go ahead and replace x, y, z in the first row where we had x1, y1, z1. So we are going to find the equation of the plane passing through these three points. So in this case, you can think about the plane as uh, going through three dimensions and including all three of these points that are given in terms of x, y, and z. So this is just like the three-dimensional expansion of finding the equation of the line in two dimensions. All right, so I am going to put in here my values. And the equation of the plane should be in terms of x, y, and z. So I put x, y, z in the top row. I'm going to cross my z's so they don't look like twos. And then the next row I've got 1, negative 2, 1, and a 1. Then negative 1, negative 1, 7, and a 1. And then in my last row, 2, negative 1, 3, and a 1. Okay, because I've got x, y, and z here, I'm going to have to use a cofactor expansion. I can't uh, easily plug this into a um, computer program. So I'm going to start with X. Now X is in position row one, column one. So that's going to be negative one to the one plus one for the coefficient. So the coefficient of X is going to be a positive one. And then the determinant that x gets multiplied by is the 3 by 3 determinant that doesn't include row 1 or column 1. Okay, now I'm going to move on to y, so I'm going to cycle through my colors here. So now y is going to have the determinant that doesn't include row 1 or column one. Y is in uh, row one, column two. So negative one to the one plus two is gonna be a negative one because it's negative one to the third. So we're gonna have a minus Y here. And then we fill in our determinant corresponding with the values that are not in the same row or column as Y. Okay, now we do the calculation for Z. Z is in row one, column three, so it's gonna be a positive one for the coefficient. So we'll have a plus Z here. And so then we're gonna take the values that are in columns one, two, and four, but not row one for this determinant.
And then I have to take care of the constant here. So we've got the one here. And so I'm going to multiply one by that determinant that is in columns one, two, and three, but not row one. And then this value one is in uh, row one, column four. So that coefficient is going to end up coming out negative. So this is going to be minus one, negative two, one, negative one, negative one, seven, two, negative one, and three. Okay, so now I went ahead and calculated all these determinants in Simpy. I can go ahead and do that and check my work. So what I got was 4x minus 10y. So the determinant that went with y was a 10, and we had a minus there. Plus 3z, because the determinant that went with the z was a 3, and we had positive there. And then minus 27 from the last determinant equals 0. So the equation of the plane that these points pass through is 4x minus 10y plus 3z equals 27. All right, so you will now practice in the discussion calculating uh, similar determinants to find volumes and equations of planes.